students. Um, on this clip, we're going to be going over how to analyze a graph. We're going to be looking for a lot of information about this graph. Um, intervals where it's increasing, decreasing, um, the extrema, the extrema, the look, looking at absolute extrema, um, the points of this points of inflection, concavity, discontinuities, and the type of discontinuities, and the points of non-differentiability. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get started uh, with uh, where it's increasing or or decreasing. Okay. All right. So um, let's, so let's call A part. It's increasing. Where is this function increasing? Basically, if the slope of the tangent line is positive, then it's increasing on that interval. Imagine you can visualize, uh, picture this as being a, or a hill. You're driving from left to right. Anytime that the car is going uphill or the, the headlamps is pointing upwards, you know that the function is increasing. If the headlamp of the car is pointing downwards, then you know it's, it's decreasing. So if you look at this, if the car is going up, you see the headlamp is pointing upwards, upwards, upwards. So all of the way up to here, it's increasing, right? And also here, you notice it's pointing upwards. So this interval all the way up is increasing. And then um, on the other side, right here, uh, you see that if this is a car with the headlamp, this is pointing downwards, right? So it's decreasing. Well, think about the slope of the tangent line has a negative value for all these points in this interval. And also here, is decreasing at an increasing rate, okay? The rate of um, increasing, the rate at which is decreasing is increasing here, all right? Um, so there you have it. So where is it increasing? So it's basically increasing from, if you can't see it clearly, this is negative 3 pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2. So it's increasing from here to here, this is negative pi over 2. So it's increasing from, uh, so at, at that at negative 3 pi over 2, at this point, is neither increasing nor decreasing. So we can include that point. So from negative 3 pi over 2 all the way to negative pi over 2, it's increasing. And then it's also increasing from 0, from 0 to um, pi over 2. Okay? These are the intervals that we use the function is increasing. Right, how about decreasing? Where is it decreasing? Or where is the slope of the tangent line negative? It's decreasing from uh, negative pi over 2 to 0. And then from pi over 2 all the way to uh, um, infinity. Okay? So this keeps decreasing forever. Look at the pattern. You can tell that it keeps decreasing forever. All right, uh, let's move on and talk about the extremas. Let's talk about the local extremas first, and then we'll find that we try and see if there are any uh, global extremas in this in this problem, okay? All right, so extremas, uh, we're gonna look for the local max or min. So um, let's see, we have, a, we have a, a local extrema here. If you look at this point, at every point around here, is there any output value to the y that's lower than this? Absolutely not. So this is a local low point. So this is a this is a min because it's a local low point. This would have been a good local maximum, um, but it's discontinuous at the highest point here. So we don't have any any local maximum over here. If you look um, at this point right here, at this point. Um, is there any surrounding output values that is as low as zero in this relative environment in this neighborhood? Absolutely not. So we have a local min here. And then if you look, this is also a min. And if you look at this point, relative to every point around here, is there any point that is as high as this point right here? Absolutely not. So this is basically a local maximum. All right. Um, so for a local max, um, C, we have a local max that x equals pi over 2. Okay, that's our local max, and we don't have any other local maximum. This one uh, is a discontinuous, it's discontinuous, the maximum was taken away, so it's not a local max. Uh, and then for the local min, 
uh, we have a local mean at x equals negative 3 pi over 2. We also have another local mean at x equals 0. Okay, this is a local mean right here. This is a local mean right here. Now, how about um, absolute? Absolute max. To find the absolute or global maximum, we need to find the highest point on the graph. Is there a highest point on the graph? You notice this function has a, a vertical asymptote from the left here, so this point goes up forever uh, to infinity, so there isn't any absolute maximum here. Since this point keeps on going, there's no absolute maximum, or you can see it resides at infinity. Um, and then for the absolute min, is there any lowest point in the enti entire domain of this graph? Uh, you look at this graph, see this point right here? It indicates that the graph keeps going lower and lower and lower forever. So there isn't the absolute lowest point for this function on the entire domain. So you have no uh, absolute minimum for this function. Okay? All right. Now let's uh, go ahead and take a look at the point of inflection. Um, so the points of inflection are basically where the points where the concavity changes. So probably we'll, let's talk about the concavity first, and then um, um, we'll do the points of inflection, okay? So um, if you take a look at this graph, you notice that if it's opening up, it's concave up, and if it opens down, it's concave down. So if you look here, from on this interval right here, the graph kind of opens up a little bit, or um, has a positive second derivative. Um, so this one opens up. So this is concave up. Okay. Um, and then if you look at this, it bends downward a little bit on this interval. The graph is concave down. Okay. You notice that um, uh, the first derivative is kind of decreasing. Right, it's going from a high point to a low point. It's decreasing. A decreasing uh, first derivative is concave down. All right, um, and then if you take a look at this piece right here, is also concave down. At this point right here, um, there isn't there isn't um, any. Neither, there's no concavity here because it's discontinuous. Okay, you can only look at concavity on continuous intervals. All right, so if you take a look at this piece right here, from here to here, you see it's, you see the concavity opens upwards, so it's concave up. The first derivative is increasing. You see, the second derivative is positive, so this is concave up. And then for this piece right here, from here all the way to infinity, um, this graph is um, concave down. Okay. All right. All right. So um, since we've established the concavity, now we're going to talk about the points of inflection. Points of inflection are where concavity changes, but there isn't a point of discontinuity where with the change where the change occurs. Okay. So that point is defined. All right. So we notice that concavity changes between three from uh, this interval to this interval. At this point, there's a switch in. Um, concavity. This is concave up and this is concave down. This point is there's no discontinuity here. So uh, let's do our first point of inflection. So uh, point of inflection, half uh, inflection. The first one is x equals uh, negative pi. Now um, there's no change in uh, concavity here. This is consistently concave down. This is concave down, but at this point, at x equals 0, it changes from concave down to concave up. There's a switch in concavity here, so also we have x equals 0 as a point of inflection. And then um, there is also a change in concavity here. This is concave up, and here this is concave down. But um, if you take a look at this, if you take a look at this piece right here, this derivative, there's a discontinuity here. The function is not continuous on this function, so this point doesn't count as a point of inflection because of this discontinuity um, that, that we have over here. Okay? So there's a specific point on this graph where the concavity changes. All right, so there goes your points of inflection. All 
All right. Um, all right. I made a slight. Uh, so just a quick correction. Um, this point x equals zero is not a point of inflection. Sorry about that. Um, if you take a look at this point x equals zero, you have a you have a a corner here. So the first derivative doesn't exist. Hence, the second derivative doesn't exist, so it's impossible to actually rigorously de define a, um, an, a point of inflection at this point right here. So, if, if you have an, a case of non-differentiability, um, you cannot define that point as a um, as an, a point of inflection. So, like in this case, the function is differentiable here. It's a smooth, it's a smooth curve right here, but at this point, it's not smooth, so it's not differentiable. So. Since it's not differentiable here, we cannot consider it to be a point of inflection. Just as, like here, we have a discontinuity, so it's not differentiable, so that's why this point cannot also be considered a point of inflection. Okay? So remember, costs for corners cannot be, uh, do not qualify as points of inflection. Alright? You need to have it, you need to have a smooth point. So the only point of inflection is just x equals negative 5. Alright, so let's talk about our concavities. Um, this is um, option G. So to talk about our uh, concavities, we have it concave up on the following intervals, concave up uh, from uh, including negative 3 pi over 2 all the way to um, negative pi. At this point, this is a point of inflection is neither concave up nor concave down, and then it's concave up again from zero uh, all the way to uh, pi over two. Okay, these are the intervals where it's concave up. All right, and then for concave down, uh, you get g h pi. For concave down, I'm going to put c d. Is going to be on the interval from uh, negative pi all the way to pi over negative pi over 2. Remember, we cannot include this point because there isn't any concavity here. It cannot be the concavity cannot be defined here since it's discontinuous and hence non differentiable. And then we're going to unite that with uh, uh, negative pi over 2 all the way to 0. You see, at 0, we have a corner here, so we can define a uh, concavity at this point, okay? And then finally, concave down union from um, pi over 2 all the way to infinity, all right? So they have your concavity. All right, now uh, let's go ahead and find the um, discontinuities. So for the discontinuities, g h i j, um, put this up a little bit. We have just two discontinuities here, all right? The first break happens at uh, at this value right here, negative pi over 2, and the next break happens at pi over 2, all right? So we have discontinuities at these two points, but the question asks us for the types of discontinuities that exist at those points. So uh, we have, at this point, this is a point, a removable discontinuity. So discontinuities, this one, Continuities. Uh, we have point or removable at uh, x equals negative pi over 2. And at this point right here, at pi over 2, we have an infinite discontinuity. Okay, this goes up, we have like a symptom from the left here. So that's an essential or infinite discontinuity. So we have an infinite, infinite. Uh, discontinuity at x equals pi over 2. Okay, so those are the two discontinuities that we have. All right? Okay, now the last uh, question that we're asked to find is the, uh, are the points of non-differentiability. So where on this graph uh, is the function not differentiable? Okay? I'm just going to erase all of this, and then I'm going to put the answers there. So where is the, where um, on this graph is the function not differentiable? Remember, Anywhere where um, we have a corner or cusp or discontinuity, uh, we know that um, the function is not differentiable at that at that particular point. Okay, so let's take a look at this graph right here. Uh, where 
are my points of non differentiability. We have a corner here. So the last one is K. So letter K is so a non differentiability. Non differentiability. We have at x equals 0, we have a corner. Okay, and then at uh, negative pi over 2, I'm oh, sorry, x equals negative pi over 2. Pi over 2, because we have a discontinuity. Remember, differentiability implies, this, uh, implies continuity. So we cannot see that. If we are saying that it's differentiable here, then we are saying that it's continuous here, but that's not the case. We see that we have a discontinuity here, so that means that um, the function is not differentiable at a discontinuity. Also here, we have another big discontinuity, so there doesn't exist, um, there doesn't exist a tangent line at this point, so you cannot calculate the, this, the, uh, the value of the discontinuity. Also, remember discontinuity, differentiability implies continuity. So you're saying that this function is differentiable at pi over 2, you're just basically saying that it's continuous here, but that's not the case. So x equals pi over 2 um, is not differentiable because there's a discontinuity there, and you cannot have differentiability at points of discontinuity. Okay? Alright, so we have two discontinuities and a, corn, uh, a corner. Um, because if you look at this point right here, the left and right hand derivatives don't match, so you don't have a derivative, a definitive derivative at this point. All right, so there goes um, your point of non differentiability. So every other point in this graph, the function um, is differentiable. All right, so thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. You can feel free to subscribe uh, to this channel so you can get updates to other cool videos such as this. More videos can be found on mygoodshop.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.